Welcome back to another Pokemon Master Data Mine Analysis video. Alright, just to preface, because I always preface this at the beginning. Spoiler alert. Um, there are going to be units that are going to be shown that have not been officially announced yet. And um, of course, some of these units are showing might spoil some of like the future events and stuff. So just to let you know, spoiler alert. If you don't want to be spoiled about Pokemon Master, what's what's coming out in Pokemon Masters in April 2023, click away, all right? You've been warned, all right? Now, anyways, oh my goodness, guys. I've been waiting so long for a Vizinia alt, and we finally got it. Yes, we finally got a Zinnia alt. I am so, so happy and excited. Yes. I mean, my whole brand, not my whole brand, but like, you see that pro YouTube profile picture of Zinnia. I've been wanting a Zinnia alt since like, um, basically since like the very beginning, you know? Every day of mine, is like, oh, just waiting. Every day of mine, I look and say, oh, is, it, is, it is today, is this the month that we're gonna get Zinnia? And every time, uh, at least before this, every time I was like, no, you know, just always saving gems for Zinnia. Always have gems on my account. Always made sure that I had enough. If Zinnia drops tomorrow, I'll be able to get her. Always saving the gems. Uh, but I'll make a whole video on that. Anyways, like lit this is literally like what I've been waiting for. Like, I've been waiting for a Zinnia all this entire time, and so we finally got one. But we'll get to that. No, 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 no. We don't even get to that. We'll talk. We'll talk about her first. We'll talk about her first. I'm super excited. I don't know, like my, obviously maybe the tone of my voice right now is excited, but yeah, when, when I'm, I will make a separate video of me like scouting her. Obviously she's gonna be a five out of five. Um, in terms of me like rolling, we get five copies and everything. So I think that's gonna be a cool video. Um, but yeah, special costume. So it's gonna be like a special costume event. Um, and she's tech. I mean, it would have been cool if she was like support or a striker because I feel like I get a lot of more use out of a support or striker unit, you know, but she's tech. Uh, she's using a Thievul. I honestly didn't even remember what generation Thievul was from. Um, so I had to like look it up and like, oh, it's from Galar. <laughs> I don't even remember running into this in, in, in my sword playthrough. I must have. Um, but anyway, it's tech, it's dark type. Um, you know what, I guess some of these videos, I can like zoom in a little bit to make it clear. So it's a dark type. And, um, yeah, all these units, all these special costume units have like super, like, they have something special about like, like these are all super, well I shouldn't say they're all special units. But at least three out of the four of them are super special and Zinni is one of these special units. So basically when, when she, um, when she goes on board, she applies a dark type, uh, rebuff. So basically, it makes it so that um, you know, the next dark type you use, the dark the next dark type move you use, I think it does more damage, um, and that combos with her B Night Slash. So essentially, this activates when you have the dark type uh, rebuff. I think it's supposed to say debuff. Um, I don't know why it's rebuff. Um, and obviously, it deactivates when you use and, and when there's no more rebuff, um, w which makes sense because like you'll use the dark. You use this Night Slash as a dark move, so you'll remove the debuff anyways. And this move only has one max use. Okay, so you're just gonna basically summon this unit, and then this is gonna be the first thing you use with Zinnia. And then this move, again, never misses. Um, here's the thing, it returns the target's raise stats to normal, and it raises the user's same stat by amount. So it's basically Snatch, like um, Leer and um, Grimsley's Snatch. Um, but it's at the beginning of the battle because sometimes units, your opponent's units, when they're summoned, they sometimes gain stats. And so this unit basically makes it so that it's a clean slate every single time um, when you use this bead Night Slash. And also it buffs Zinnia's, um, you know, Devil, which is interesting. And then also, um, it crits every time, which is like, okay, like that doesn't, honestly kind of irrelevant. Um, and then it applies a no stat increase. For the opponent's side of the field, so basically, when you use this unit, not only do you debuff your you immediately debuff your opponent, but you also don't allow them to set up buffs. Now, what I'm confused about is that I don't know if 
they're still going to be able to use those buff moves, you know, because it's the AI playing. So if the AI can't, because if the stats can't rise, can the AI still use the stat rising uh, moves? Because usually, like, when you play normally, they would use some damage moves, and then they'll use the stat increase moves. So what I'm wondering is, is the, is the AI smart and, like, makes it so that um, they just use more attack moves? Because if that's actually the case, then Zinnia might not be as good as, um, you know, might not, might not be good. Because basically, you're just taunting your opponent, essentially. It's like the Pokemon version of taunt. Um... But if it's not, and it's um, they continue using status moves, then essentially you're just gonna get um, you know, you're just gonna get free um, your your opponent's just gonna get turns that are skipped essentially. It's like they're flinched, you know. Um, so it, it it's definitely gonna rely on testing. Um, and then the rest of her kit, she she has vigilance for some reason, which is nice, I suppose. Uh, but then also unbuffo freebie nine. So with this field up, the no stat increase field up, every time you use a move, after like the first move, you get the free move. So what I'm questioning is, if you use the Night Slash, it's technically not, you're gonna summon the field. So does this trigger when you use the B Night Slash? Or does it trigger after you use like Crunch, after you use the B Night Slash? Again, there's another thing that I don't quite know the order of, um, which of course it would re require a little bit of testing. Um, in terms of her kit in general, it, she has Crunch, which is which is cost three, which is super expensive for like a tech unit. But if you really think about it, um, you know you're gonna get if you have the no stat increase effect on board, you're just gonna get Crunches for free. You know maybe the maybe or maybe not the first one is free, but the second one would definitely always be free. And as long as you have the field up, you're just gonna use free Crunches, which lower the opponent's defense. Um, also, you can use her as more of a support unit because she has X attack all, raising all your um, allies attack. And then catch me if you can, which applies the stat reduction defense on the ally team. And it raises her evasiveness and crit rate by 1 and 2 respectively. Um, the stat reduction defense effect is actually super good because um, you know it just prevents you from getting lowered accuracy. It prevents you from getting your defense lowered. Um, funny enough, it, you can like use her with combination of like um, normal Zinnia because normal Zinnia has Draco Meteor which lowers special attack so you can combo her with like units that lower their um, stats by using moves you know so there's some there's some weird synergy that you can go on there um, but yeah I think the stat reduction defense is really good because the only other unit that I can think of that has it is like Misty you know so you know it's uh, definitely Zinnia Zinnia is just obviously way better than um, this seems way better than Misty because she actually can buff. Zinnia here can actually buff. Has free moves. Um, Vigilance is nice. Built-in Vigilance so you can use a different lucky skill. Um, in terms of her sync grid, um, I feel like there's two ways you can build her. You can kind of build her as a striker. Oh, her sync move. Um, the more your stat is raised, the greater the power, right? So, you know, very similar to a lot of units we've already had similar to that so basically you just want to um uh, raise her stats a lot but yeah there's two ways you can build her i feel like you can build her as kind of like a sync nuker um just to make her do as much damage as possible in that case you want some nodes like um you know unbuff foe sync up nine which raises your sync move if your the opponent is not buff you also would want ri ri rising tide similarly to i think what like um hilda and victini have um, and I feel like um, another unit has this too. I can't, maybe Iris, Champion Iris has it. But like, um, you know, just buffing your sync move. You also have a super sinker, which applies super effective after sync move for the first time. Um, stuff like that is pretty good. Insult to, in insult to injury. So lower defense, because if you're going to use her as like a, maybe not a sinker, but like as just a normal striker for dark, um, you know, you're going to lower defense with crunch if you have defense crunch nine and on the roll two which again more chance of lowering defense um you can go ahead and insult to injury so lower defense and obviously if they lower defense then your crunch is just going to do more damage in general um and of course better preparation so increases more damage your normal moves increase more with raised stats so yeah she has a lot going on in terms of like 
damage potential, but also I think she has a really good um, support potential here as well. Again, because she's so reliant on um, free moves from the no uh, stat increase effect on board, you want to extend it here. And I feel like this is only like a second node, right? Like you can get this at two copies in here. That's pretty good. And also have, um, she can also flinch when uh, using a move against a target with no stat increase. Again, you're, they're not going to have any stat increase because you're going to use the whole um, uh, B Night Slash to revert it and not allow them to buff. So you're going to be able to flinch them at 70%. 70% is a lot. 70% is a lot, um, a high chance to crit. Or I'm trying not to crit, but to flinch. Um, so yeah, I think she has a, I think Zinnia has a lot going on with her kit. I think she's going to require a lot of testing because I don't know, how, again, I don't know what the B Night Slash and the unbuff for freebie nine. I don't know how that interaction is gonna work exactly, but I, I think she's a uh, pretty okay. Nothing good, but she's definitely super interesting. But anyways, but let's go back um, and talk about Steven. So Steven actually gets two units, but we'll talk about the special costume unit. Again, similarly to Zinnia, he is tech, um, and he's using a shiny Scotland for some reason, and his kit is like super wild, all right? So basically lowers the opponent's type um, debuff by a weakness by one the first time the user attack move is successful. So unfortunately, you're only going to get this one time, but essentially you tackle because he has tackle. So you tackle and then you lower their um, debuff by the, their weakness. Uh, so essentially, um, if they're like weak to fire, then they're more success successful susceptible to fire their next move right and then um okay i should have tested this but i don't even think i have a unit to test it with but does the rebuff stay like is it like a lower defense like does it get removed after you use a move or does it linger again i don't exactly remember if i ha i actually do have a unit it's a champion uh, serena I think I can test this with, but I don't know if it lingers. I'm assuming it doesn't linger. That it's, it's like the um, uh, physical move up next effect. I think it only lasts for like one move, but it could be wrong. It could linger for uh, for like ever. Uh, I should probably test that. <laughs> Another thing that I'm not exactly sure what it means is team um, immunizing command nine. So applies the uh, condition notification effect if they use a trainer move. And only once per battle. So if you get trainer move, then you, you you know you're resistant to conditions, which is pretty good. And then it also raises speed of all your allies by one if it attacks an opponent with the no evasiveness effect. All right. So you're probably wondering where does this no evasiveness effect comes comes from? Well, it comes from B Leer. So B Leer happens when at least one Pokemon has a lower type rebuff. So essentially, you summon Scotland. You use tackle. You give him that um that type debuff and then you're able to use Le uh b leer so what b leer does you can use it three times by the way it only cost it only costs one like normal leer you can use it three times uh, so similarly to like bullet punch um, um so what it does is it lowers attack defense speed by two all right so it's like super strong because it can like completely lower defense speed by two and obviously lowering attack is pretty good for like some units, but obviously there's also special attackers. Um, it applies the no evasiveness effect on the target um, and adds the restrain effect to the target. All right, so it doesn't apply it to, uh, it applies it to all targets actually, because Leer affects all targets. So all the targets are gonna get the no evasiveness effect. So essentially they can't dodge i'm pretty sure what that means is they can't dodge so your moves are always 100 percent accuracy which is super strong like imagine using him with um gazma all right think about that combo right um but that's pretty good but also with the no evasiveness it also raises speed because you're gonna hit them but then they can raise speed um so there's like some synergy there and then also with scotland's kit like that's pretty good so he can debuff he can raise the team speed um the opponent is never going to get hit, all right? You get the condition notification. You even get a little bit of extra damage from lowering their uh, type, right? Lowering their type debuff. But also, this unit has super effective, and um, which raises the effectiveness 
which raised super effective move of like the next attack and also mystery solve which again raises speed um which is kind of irrelevant because you're all going to be raising a lot of speed and also increases the physical move um up next effect by three all right so this unit just has this is one of this some some units have the problem of that they just don't have enough good moves like some units have uh, in my opinion just useless moves that you never use um, i mentioned victini um hilda victini in this video for example confusion is a useless move right so a lot of a lot of units have like useless move but when it comes to scotland every move is good you need to use tackle right to get that debuff um you, leer b leer you can use it three times and it only costs one each and it's super good because it lowers a bunch of stats super effectiveness and mystery solve if you use this on like a physical striker like think about all the extra damage you're gonna get from the super effectiveness from the um the physical move up and also from the lower defense because you're going to be lowering defense and leader so like steven here can do so much i'm thinking like normally what you would do is that you would come in you use tackle you use b leader like three times um and then like the second sync move you you buff up your striker so you buff them out with the physical move up and the super effectiveness up and then the next their next sync move which is the first sync move you're probably going to sync with like another unit um and then yeah so this unit just has so much things you can do you know you don't need to debuff you can just go with the super effective um buff and then the mystery solve buff all right um but i mean if you want to debuff you can debuff too so again i think this unit is super interesting a lot you can do and um you know i think there's definitely some it's, it's easy it's um is an easy unit to use like you know if you if you want to fill in a unit similarly to like seasonal jasmine i think she also i mean she also has a super effective up um but she's also a really good unit too um the only problem with steven and i think is a major problem is that he's a tech you know I, reading his kit he buffs um he buffs your team super well and so initially you would think that he would be a support unit um but also he debuffs so i think that's what makes him a tech unit and the thing about him being a tech unit is that it really makes it so that his stats are bad when he's a tech unit it means his defense is a lot lower than like a support unit and also when you sync move you can't apply that good, good buff to your whole team you can't apply that double sync move buff um and so i think him being a tech is actually super bad because you're never gonna tech you're never gonna sync with him all right like the more the, the opponent's defense is lower the greater power like that's like yeah don't even in my opinion yeah you, that's the only bad thing about this unit zinnia is allowed to be a tech unit but just, she can do damage but steven i just don't see the damage coming from him especially since super effectiveness up literally never works on him because he's a normal unit all right the next unit i guess we'll talk about his um his uh trainer launch unit so he's an, as another tech unit. Um, it's Cradley, which I heckin' love. Cradley, Cradley is like my favorite fossil Pokemon in Pokemon. Um, Alma, Alma Star is a close second, right? Or Alma Knight's a close second. But Cradley is super. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it would have been funny if Cradley was um, the special costume. Like, imagine a crime solving Cradley. Oh my gosh. Imagine if, if, if like, Steven's Cradley had that much personality. Um, anyways, this unit is not very good. Um, basically, has water guard. Okay, sure. Has catalytic uh, infliction. So, raises the special uh, move gauge acceleration after you use a status move. And on the roll. So, more chance of lowering stats. Um, the unit stats, nothing to really run home, on, with, run home with. But stealth rock. So, this unit has stealth rock similarly to another unit that I forgot that also has stealth rock. Um, yeah, I forgot the other unit, but this is, just, I think the second unit game was self rock. So basically it's just, um, after your opponent use a move, it, it does like rock chip damage on them. I'm not sure exactly how much damage this does, but also don't forget, you're going to get that move a gauge acceleration with this because it's a status move. And then after you use rock stealth rock, you're probably just going to use like gem hut perhaps to give, um, your cradle an enduring effect. So cradle will have, um, enduring and essentially trap 
all right so trap is very similar to stealth rock and like burn and poison as when your opponent uses a move it does damage to them and with combination of enduring um it makes Crayley and steven a really good unit to like finish off um legendary arena because in legendary arena um sometimes like you can't kill your opponent but they're so powerful um like you're so close to be defeating them but at towards the end of the battle they get so buffed and so they just one shot all your dudes so having being able to stealth rock and endure makes it so that you survive a few moves and that you're able to do extra chip damage to hopefully finish off um a um a legendary so i think like that's the utility that he has similarly to a lot of other units that i think have the same like purpose that they can be used as like a legendary arena finisher i think crazy could be used as a, a legendary arena finisher also acid only costs one and it can lower special defense like that's fine right but again he's a tech unit so he's not like super good oh i never showed scotland as sync grid i guess i just finished talking about cradley so we'll talk about cradley sync grid um yeah I, I mean he has some things that like if you use stealth rock you can uh you know raise your crit rate next and then raise super effective and next i don't really think that's good you can also try to use cradley as like a a, a sync move user you know you have brain teaser powers up oh wait no those powers are normal moves um if the special defense has lowered yeah i don't think that's good like what are you going to power up your ancient power you know um power up move when rock damage field is applied to the opponent opponent field of play like what that's useless because when are your opponent ever going to have rock damage field I think that's just so unlikely. Also has sync, um, sync move nodes, like extra sync move nodes, which I think is, again, super odd. But what I come to the conclusion of, as I did, he's a good flincher. Because you, you have staggering too, so 30% chance to flinch with, like, um, ancient power or acid. Um, um, also, gem hunt, MP refresh too. Again, you can refresh more endurings. Uh, <laughs> make stuff... You can also increase your crit rate, which I don't think is good because again, Cradle doesn't really do that much damage. Swag bag increase increases the chance of lowering special defense, um, and also brute wits, which isn't really good because it more your the user special defense is raised, so you have to raise your own special defense to get good sync move damage. So yeah, just a bunch of bad nodes I think on Cradley. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you're probably just gonna summon him. It just summon him, use stealth rock. And then maybe use um, Enduring so that you don't get one shot. And then just spam Acid. But I don't think it's that good. But going back to Scotland. I remember Scotland was like that debuffer. But also can um, in, uh, buff your physical moves and super effectiveness moves. So that's kind of what I did. Um, I don't like this whole Sandstorm synergy he has. Because he has like Sands of Time, Sand, sand sh Shelter. I think if you're using Sandstorm... You're probably using a ground type striker. So you have your, your sandstorm user, which is like um extra drill, right? And then you have your uh you have your a uh, ground striker, probably like a Garchomp. And then the last unit, do you really want Scotland? I mean Scotland could buff Cynthia, right? The Steven Cynthia combo. Like he could buff Cynthia with um, you know, the, the physical move buff, the super effective move buff, um, lowering your opponent's defense, raising your own speed from the passive but then also i think it would just you can just use um courtney right courtney gives the ground um zone and isn't ground zone just like easier to play around you know so yeah i mean you could use scotland with cynthia and extra drill like that that could work um but at the end of the day would you probably want to do something else i just realized that this sync grid is not even complete <laughs> i'm supposed to do that um oh but that's one way of building him um, another way of building him is, I don't know, getting restrain buff, right? You can, like, make him do more damage with up your opponent's restrain. Um, also can increase speed if you're, uh, yeah, just, just summon is an increased speed. Um, apply the free move effect to all opponents after you use a sync move. Again, if he was a support unit, this would be good, right? Also, Safety Tether and Team Sync Redemption. Team Sync Redemption 1 is really good. Restores 1 MP to the trainer's, uh, user's trainer move the first time it's sync. Again, being able to just really go pile on all the buffs that you can potentially do with your teammates. The problem is, again, he's not sync. Oops, I just 
Oh, I just went back. Can I go forward? Oh, I just it just deleted all of it. Oh well, you saw it. Um, yeah, it's it's not a support unit, and so if you're gonna be using a sync move with this, it's just tech and it just does damage. So I don't think that's that good. Safety tether is amazing, but again, are you really gonna try to sync with this unit for uh, enduring effect on all your teammates? You you might as well just um, you know sync with like a support unit or sync with like a DPS a striker unit for damage or for support. Uh, or for extra, yeah, for damage essentially. Because if no matter if you sync with a support or striker, you, you're gonna do more damage. Um, but also, what he can do is uh, flinching as well. So when you use the no evasiveness stat, you can also flinch. Again, you don't need to use layer three times. You can use layer one time and then wait until the uh, no evasiveness effect like wears off, and then you can use it again. I think that's how it works. Um, so you're always going to be able to flinch, 50% flinch. Also, tackle has a 50% chance if you, have, if you use flabbergasted to confuse, similarly to um, uh, Sableye and uh, Caitlyn, right? That's pretty interesting as well. Um, anything else special? 30% um, 30, 30, 30 chance of raising defense and special defense when using a trainer move. Um, yeah, he has a lot of trainer moves. Steven has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trainer moves. So the chance of you raising your defense, especially defense, is pretty high. Um, and then also easy uh, target charge nine. So basically, you're just gonna get a move gauge charge every time you attack your opponent with no evasion effect. Um, it makes your tackles free. Um, it makes um, again, Steven seems like a super good support unit, but it's just not a support unit. <laughs> he's a tech unit. So yeah, I think he's super super good here. Um, I guess we can close these to save. All right, our next unit. This video is gonna be super long, by the way. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a lot of new units. Um, Shauna. Now Shauna is a support unit, and I think Shauna is the one unit that's kind of boring. I don't think she is very interesting as a uh, Steven, Zinnia, or even Lyra, for a matter of fact. I think that she, out of all these new event units, she's the most boring. But I also think that she's kind of like super good too um so the page is all backwards again i'm using cerebi.net for um all my pokemon video game information because it's the best site in my opinion um but also i, I found out about all this information from reddit the Pokemon Masters reddit again like what i always mention in the description and stuff but anyways cleft key she uses cleft key and again if we look at these stats she has really good defense like these defenses go over 300 um, but her HP is kind of low, so that's kind of the trade-off. High defense, low HP. Um, a team steals stat 9. So every time Klefki uses a move on an opponent, attack move on an opponent, and it hits, it lowers one of these stats. Um, and also raises um, your team's stats by the same amount. So if you, can, you hit your opponent, um, you lower their defense, you raise your defense. Alright, this is like super... Um, it's like stealing your opponent's stats essentially right and also um retaliatory stat steal nine so when you get hit you also lower your opponent's like for example their attack and then you raise your own attack your whole your whole team's attack um so oh i'm sorry this is only the user my bad my bad my bad take that back so if your opponent hits clef key then clef key lowers that lowers a random stat and it raises its own stat um Super interesting, super fun, but keep in mind, super inconsistent, right? You're not gonna fully buff your unit just from these passives, all right? It's nice to have, and it's nice to debuff your opponent and buff your team, all right? Buffing a random defense, buffing a random special defense could be a difference between winning or losing a battle. But keep in mind, it's not consistent, and you probably just want a actual support unit or just actually buffing your own striker unit by using their own buff moves, right? But it also has full brace command nine, which would raise the user's defense by one and special defense by one when you use a trainer move. So again, even though Klefki has high defense, you can also raise defense in like three ways. Um, like literally all these passives can potentially raise or one of them guaranteed raise and the two other potentially raise a defense and special defense. So this unit is just gonna have full defense, special defense super quickly. Tackle, which is super good, because again, t team uh, stat skill nine, super cheap to trigger. Potion, super nice, always nice to have potion on support unit. Um, mirror shot, so moderate chance of lowering um, accuracy, that's pretty decent. Unfortunately, the accuracy is 90, 
is 85. And um, keep in mind, Klefki can't actually raise its uh, accuracy or lower the opponent's accuracy in that, in that fact um, with the passes. So keep that in mind. Um, you're not, um, it, with 85% accuracy, I feel like this move is not really good. Um, again, it's super, it's super inconsistent to get off. Unless you use like Scotland, where you get like, your opponent has no evasive, evasion, so you can like always hit them. I think that's how it works. Um, but yeah, mirror shot isn't really good, in my opinion. I mean, also lowering your opponent's accuracy isn't really good in this game anyways. Um, I got, um, uh, you have another, um, trainer move. I think I've got it. i am applied the status move defense, which is already super good. Similarly to Zinnia, how she has that, like the no stat buff. Um, is it no stat buff? What did, what did Zinnia have again? I totally forgot. Um, it's the stat reduction. Yeah, so you, you can't get your stat reduction, which is super good. Um, Shauna also has similar no status move or no status of conditions which is super strong as well um so yeah i'm pretty sure like you can't get poison or burn and stuff like that which is super good because sometimes in champion stadium they like use a move and it burns all your uh all your units but if you're able to resist it um then like none of your units get that static condition uh, so that's super good also stat defense reduction defense same thing as Zinnia, there you go. You, it's all, it's super good to set up these fields and also raise crit rate by two. Um, and by using it two times, you can uh, max out your crit rate. So Clef Key is a super good unit, a super good support unit because it's a support unit that can heal and uh, raise crit. So we don't have that many units that raises crit and heal. Um, for example, a good unit might be Tokopi, Berg and Tokopi, and also like Lucario and Cynthia. Those are some examples of units that can raise crit and heal. Um, also, uh, Lily, Lily with uh, her polter poltergeist. Um, so yeah, just and then also um, can fully raise defense and um, have the cheap move. So yeah, I think Sean is super good. I think Sean is a super good support unit. I don't like her Synchro. I think her Synchro is kind of weird she doesn't really have much going on again mirror shot isn't good you can like try to raise accuracy of mirror shot but like that's gonna cost a lot and then i mean that's just weird um raises the stats of all ally sync pairs um uh, after using a sync move i mean that could be decent but again raising one stat after using a sync move that sync buff is nice but like i don't think that that's really that strong um endurance is nice if you want to go for that um, team grant entry, uh, I don't really think it's that good. Raising all your uh, allies sync pair special attack when enters, like that's not that good. Um, attack trap, 50% of uh, leaving opponent trapped after using a move. That's pretty interesting. Uh, extra chip damage is always nice. Um, and a 50% chance is pretty high. Um, way better than like confusion in my opinion because it's actually consistently like, consistent damage team stats steal four so again 50 percent of lowering um and then raising the same stat by the same amount after a um, move is successful so basically like it's passive but only like half of the effect or only half of the time again it's nice to get the buffs and it's nice to debuff but keep in mind that these buffs are like inconsistent so i'm not a big fan but i mean you can do that also um the retaliatory uh, stat steal, 100% here. So you can also use this to raise your own cleft key stat. Um, but again, I feel like you're going to quickly raise your defense to max. So I don't think that that's that too useful. Also, you can increase your trainer move, making it stronger by applying the, like, the physical damage um, reduction. So basically, you just get more um, shields because you already get the stat shield. You get the stat, uh, stat condition steal shield and now you get the physical damage shield so i mean you can make her like gives out so much shield that's super strong um t fierce entry isn't, isn't really good um because it raises your attack by one stat it's not really that impactful um so she has a lot going on but i just decided to do the boring thing and made her a healer um she's a she's full potion buffs also when it gets summoned it has a it can heal itself by using a move just normal like gradual healing effect and then um tackle move gauge refresh i mean it is a super boring sync grid um but like i just made her as a healer because i think she does good enough at buffing um so yeah i think i think sean is super strong um but then we have lyra 
Team Rocket Lyra, <laughs> hilarious. So she's a support uh, as well. And um, she has Fan Fanpy, Fanpy, Fanpy. Um, and yeah, she's really weird. So she can lower ground debuff by one first time it uses a move. So you summon Fanpy and you probably use Mud Slap or Earthquake because it lowers the um, first time attacks. And I think this can apply to all opponents. So you might want to use Earthquake. Again, I don't exactly know how these rebuffs work. Is it rebuff or debuff? I'm pretty sure it's, I guess rebuff because they keep saying it's rebuff. But like, yeah, you just use Earthquake, you apply it to all your enemies. Um, and then the other things that or other passive is um, once per battle increases the physical move next effect to all allies sync by one after using a sync move. So you're probably gonna sync with Fampy just to get the uh, like the the sync move buff because it's a it's a support unit. And then you can also increase your other units' physical um, moves. Again, um, this is like another unit that you might want to consider using with like. A Cynthia and like the extra drill um, because makes it so that your ground moves do more damage you also buff physical move up similar to to Steven and also team beef up raises attack after um, the user is hit by attack move um, so I mean you can raise attack nicely um, pretty good spread of stats here I think pretty decent HP pretty decent defense um, super high defense actually um, and then mini potion all is nice just for chip healing <laughs> um mud slap to lower accuracy 100 percent or 100 percent lowering accuracy but the accuracy isn't 100 percent hopefully that made sense earthquake it costs three but i think you use earthquake to apply like the uh, the ground rebuff right and then initiate infiltration raises attack by one of all your accent pairs again with team beef up you can raise it like you can consistently raise the, the attack of your whole team to be full with just fampy um, if you use two initiate infiltrations you know raises defense by all your uh, units by three so again using it twice you can raise defense max and also the type resistant effect to the user which is pretty good um obviously um units in normal battle I like to use a lot of different um moves of different types um but if you if you're playing usually in champion stadium they use the same move once or they use it the the usually the striker like the main striker uses only one type um and so that resistance is decent but again it's inconsistent because a lot of the times the enemy just use a bunch of different type moves of different types um so that's that again i don't think that she's that good generally because like a little bit of healing but she doesn't really have that much else going on in her kit she can buff a little bit physical move up by one after sync move but like steven can do it like six you know this fanpy can get it one time on all your units and on fanpy is useless right so technically you're gonna get on two different units but with steven he can target units and it can give him three um, and if you, if you choose to sync with him or you have MP refresh and you have like the sync, um, sync grid, if you sync with him and you have the sync grid node, which refills his trainer move, then you can like do it. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like Steven just seems so much better than Vampy, um, in terms of like everything he does. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, uh, and then her sync grid, I'm also super uninspired by your sync grid as well. Um, Again, you can raise it. You can make her more um, consistent at raising attack, uh, making it so that every time she uses uh, initiate infiltration, it raises attack by two, which is pretty good. Um, free revenge two makes her so that her moves are free if she gets hit, so you can use earthquake, I guess. Um, first aid four for more healing. Uh, focus group raises um, crit rate by one hundred percent, and so what I, I essentially what I did. Was I just made it so that she's just a buffer. <laughs> she's like Hilbert. Um, yeah, she's just a buffer. She can fully raise attack, fully raise defense, fully raise crit, essentially. Um, yeah. I mean, that's kind of it. <laughs> Mud slap. Um, she also has, again, that sandstorm synergy with shifting sand, sand of times. Um, sand shelter. Cerner stuff. 
reduces move when hit by a physical attack move, I guess. But like your your fan speed phys uh, physical defense are super high. Um, so not that good in my opinion. Apply the damage guard next after you use a sync move for the first time. I mean, that can prevent some damage. That's pretty decent. Um, Built-in vigilance is always nice. Raises uh, um, special defense by two when enters battle. I mean, that's not bad of your whole team. That's not bad. Um, again, more tanking potential. Um, Earthquake has a 100% chance of lowering opponent's speed. So like Bulldoze, like that's not bad either. If like you need to lower speed. Um, and then yeah, she just has like potion buffs or mini potion buffs, I should say. So yeah, I think Fan P, Fan P is definitely one of the worst. Is or not one of the worst, but it's the worst out of all the uh, co special costume units. I don't think her Synchro is that good. I don't think her unit is that good. I don't think her kit's that good. I just think that yeah, Steven just seems better. Um, like straight up, Steven just seems like a better version of this unit. Um, this unit is able to fully buff your team. Um, Again, like how I made her sync grid, she can fully buff attack and crit. But if you want something that can buff like attack and crit, I mean, Hilbert does that for, and he's like a standard unit. And Clef Key also raises crit, doesn't exactly raise attack, but Clef Key is a way better healer in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Obviously, yeah, Lyra is kind of a weird unit. Just real quickly talking about two other of the new units we have some of the variety scout units so we have bruno he's a support with onyx um he has endurance built-in endurance which is super nice um team swift reaction nine so raises speed of all ally saint pairs when hit with an attack move so it's pretty interesting that a rock type unit can raise speed of your team like that's pretty cool and then also sterner stuff we saw with fampi um reduces physical damage I'll reduce damage from physical moves. Not bad. Um, stat wise, pretty decent distribution here. Not anything special, but it's decent. It's pretty good. Um, and then similarly to uh, Klefki, or not Klefki, similarly to Fanpi, can also f fully raise. Um, well, Fanpi can't fully raise a crit unless you have Synchrit. Um, but Onyx can, just normal, the normal kit can, can raise, um, crit rate to max. Also has a trainer move that raises attack by two. Oh, wait, no, it can only use it one time. So it raises attack by two, it doesn't really fully buff attack. So really like, yeah, so not that good. Fully raises defense though, and also applies the physical move up to Ally St. Fair's, um, so again, I'm getting like Fampy vibes here because like Fampy can also raise defense, can also raise attack, can also raise crit, also raises physical move up. And yeah, pretty decent support unit. Also has Rock Throw, which only costs one, which is super good. And Screech, which lowers defense. So it's a support unit, but can also lower defense. That's super nice. For Sync Grid, has Unyielding 2. Can, again, built-in endurance, Unyielding 2 can prevent death a lot. Also has Rock to a Flag Bearer, so you can fully raise attack if you have Sync Grid. Um, and then Adrenaline, Unbending, you know, just not that good stuff. Um, always stronger pep, prep, pep Rally, and also Hit and Heal, Team Hit and Heal. So when you use a Trainer move, not only are you going to be fully raising um, defense, but you're going to be raising attack. You're also going to be raising a little bit of speed, which is nice. But mainly what you want is this gradual healing for your whole team. Like that's super strong, in my opinion. You're getting your whole team healed up. Some uh, some defense or some status condition and effect um, defenses. Um, some sand stuff. Electric guard isn't really good. The sand stuff I don't think is that good. Sync damage guard. So after using a sync move, getting uh, damage guard next effect. I guess that's fine. Screech, um, changing infliction. So it charges the user move gauge by two when it uses the status move. So it makes it so that Screech is free. If you really need a, a defense debuffer, I guess Onyx is fine for that. Um, panic button, so when it's in a pinch, you get the move gauge acceleration. Don't really think you would need it because you're raising speed with Onyx by a lot. Um, you can also, a chance of uh, re, I mean, this is weird, restoring. Um, dire hit all plus 
after using a move, or at least a 30% chance of doing that. I don't know why you'd ever want this, because you're always going to fully buff your units crit. So I don't know why you'd ever want this. Um, and raising speed when it enters battle, all that stuff. So, um, oh, and also when you use a sync move, increase physical buff um, by one. Which is similarly to what Fampy had, I think. Not Fampy, um, but like, yeah, you know what I mean. You can raise that stuff. So, um, he's okay. I mean, I think he's definitely like okay. Kind of generic though, as you would expect from a variety unit. Um, our last unit is gonna be uh, Lorelei. Is that how you pronounce her name? Lorelei with um, Coyster. Now, this is an interesting unit here. No quarter. So basically, every time they use Ice Spear, it always hits five times. All right, keep that in mind. Ice Spear always hits five times. Now look at this. Recharging Strike Four has a fifty percent chance of raising move gauge by one if it hits a move. But now time that by five. So on average, after you use Icicle Spear, you're gonna charge your move gauge by like two and a half. So basically, Icicle Spear is free. Uh -huh. And then Restoring Strike Two, thirty percent, thirty percent chance of restoring HP after using a move. So essentially, you're gonna be restoring your HP like two or three times um, after using Icicle Sphere. I should say, not two or three times, but like one or two times. Um, so basically, Coyster, you always using, you're just gonna be using a bunch of Icicle Spears, so you're always gonna be healing yourself, and you're always gonna be charging your um, move gauge. Coyster has super low HP though. I mean, again, super high defense, I, that's kind of like the, pattern with, with all these units. Super high defense but low HP. So I guess that's okay. Um because you're gonna be healing a lot. Um similarly to Zinnia X Attack All, you can raise your cause it, oh, she's also a support unit. This coist it doesn't say it anywhere. It says it down here. Support unit, not one star is five star. Um but here you can um you have a support unit. So X Attack All makes sense sense. Protect, which is super nice. Um, just to guard it from one move because again the low HP so protect is nice, but here is the money good answer Raise defense by all your uh, allies by four. Okay, whatever raise crit rate by two I mean that's nice just in case uh, like your unit Can like buff crit rate by itself by one and so you use coister to finish off To max out the buff, but here's the money applies the enduring effect to all allies so Similarly to how um, Signa Suit Blue needs to sync so that all your allied sync pairs get um, enduring effect, Co all Coyster needs to do is you just use this trainer move, boom, all your units have enduring effect. Like that's so strong. Um, units like um, Seasonal Jasmine, which I mentioned earlier in the video, Seasonal Jasmine needs to use two trainer moves to get those endurances out. Um, Signa Suit Blue needs to sync move to get that enduring endurance out to all your uh, Alex and pairs. All Coyster needs to do is just use a trainer move. So I think that this is a super powerful trainer move. No, if, even if we don't consider like the raises of defense and, and raise in critical hit rate, simply the fact of putting endurance effect on all your ally sync pairs is just super strong. Obviously your ally sync pairs can still die to sync move, but this just gives them survivability um, against like the side Pokemon. Um, because the side Pokemon can't use sync moves. Or the, sat, the side enemy Pokemon can use Sync move, unless it's like Rachel. Um, but anyway, Sync Grid. Again, Coyster doesn't really need that much Sync Grid. And then just Sync Healing. Okay, if you if you, if you you want to Sync with her to get a little bit extra healing to your team, it's fine. You can also get the physical move buff next after using Sync move. All right, I guess that's fine. Um, raises. Physical reduction, raises a physical damage reduction after it does a pinch. I guess that's fine. You're going to be healing a lot, so you could trigger this pretty easily. Um, protect move gauge 3 is useless. First aid, more healing is fine. Um, you can make her an attack buffer. So, uh, you know, raise speed. But also, um, you know, w with X attack all MP refresh 2, you could potentially use this unit as... Uh, um, just a full attack buffer if you want, but I feel like that takes the time away from like the other trainer move Which is super good and also just using your icicle to like heal and charge the move gauge um, So you can do that as well and also raise defense 
So you can just make the X attack super potent. Um, but what I decided to do was just make her like a healer um, or like a tank. So with the Vigilance, built-in Vigilance is super nice. Healthy healing is nice. And um, Punishing Strike so it has a 20% chance or oh, and uh, Tripping Strike. So a 20% chance of lowering defense and a 20% chance of lowering speed. Again, times that by five, like that's a pretty decent chance that like, every time you use Icicle that you're gonna lower defense and speed by one, you know? So yeah, and then good answer, MP refresh two. Enduring, one time, super good. Imagine enduring, enduring twice, right? Boom, crazy. So yeah, uh, revenge boost, I guess it's fine. After it gets hit, you charge the move gauge, but honestly, it's pretty useless because like Icicle already charges your move gauge so much. Um, and then healing synergy, which is like not, or healing synergy isn't really good, um, in my opinion. So, all in all, a pretty decent unit. Nothing crazy. I mean, the trainer move, good answer, is pretty crazy. But like, yeah, um, you know, pretty good, but not like the best support unit in the game. All right, to summarize, because I, I think this video might already be like over an hour long. I'm sorry if it is, um, but I guess this is a pretty big, because there's a lot of new units. Um, but anyways, we have, in summary, we have Steven uh, with Scotland. Super interesting unit, can do a lot, can buff your allies, can debuff your opponent. Um, only problem is that it's a tech unit, which makes it so that his sync move isn't really good. Um, but hey, maybe you can get damage out of this unit. So yeah, I would give Steven a, a A tier. Super good, I think he's gonna be, maybe I'm underestimating him, maybe he's like S tier in terms of like tech support unit, but I would put him between like A and S. So like, um, you know, super strong, um, but not quite like the strongest of the strong units. I could be wrong though, I could totally be wrong and I could be underrating him a little bit. Um, but hey, I say I say he, he can do a lot and he's super versatile. The only problem is, again, he's tech and not support. I think that what, if he will support, I'll put him in S. But since he's tech, that just makes it so that his defense are lower and the sync move is kind of useless. So I put him in A, uh, but very high A. Um, trainer launch pair, Steven, I mean, it's B, you know, usable. B is like, S tier is like super good. Um, A tier is like good, B is like, usable <laughs> i think cradle is kind of a b tier pretty 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 usable but not that good honestly he might be c tier he's pretty bad <laughs> he's pretty bad not that good i don't think you'll ever use this unit normally yep there's just so much better options shauna i don't know i feel like she's like i feel like she's a too um maybe she's s i'm not sure no i think she's a I mean, her, her trainer move just has so much like shielding potential. Again, the status move, defense effect, and the stat reduction, defense effect is super strong. Um, low key, super strong in my opinion. Um, being able to fully raise defense. But yeah, just not really, not really buffing your, uh, uh, your, uh, your ally sync pairs that much, right? A lot of self healing, a lot of self defense, but like, uh, and obviously can um, heal your, uh, ally sync pairs and can also raise their crit rate but you know i feel like other pair uh, other units can do the same thing um so yeah i think she's fine i think he did have a sync what was it because she flinch i forgot if she can flinch no she can like trap i think or what was it i'm not sure i deleted all those sync grid um but anyways yeah i think she's fine don't think she's that good though i, I would say she's a though I, you know, I think she's a pretty good support unit. I don't think you'll be that sad with her, but nothing too special. Lyra, I have to put her at B tier. I don't think she's that good. I feel like the other units are just the other units in the same patch are just so much better. Um, I think Steven's just so much better. I think Sean is just so much better than this unit. Put this unit at C. Definitely okay, but the problem is she's competing with a bunch of other units because she's supposed to be like. A ground support unit but when it comes to ground support units you have like ground zone you have steven himself you know you have yeah i just think that there's just so much better ground units that are like um that yeah you don't really like fan feed this is not that good um 
usable but like B tier and again that sync grid you saw like I had to really stretch it out to make her like a good buffer and you need to have 30 copies to be a good buffer in my opinion and so like yeah not really that good um oh yeah and then steven and shauna both have one copy is super good i don't believe you need them at more than one copy but like at one copy they're like pretty good but at more copies obviously every unit more copy is strong and i think lyra really depended on a lot more copies for her to be like really good zinnia i think that she is okay um, I don't, I definitely think that she's like A tier. I think that she could be strong, um, as like a dark support unit. But then at the end of the day, like dark zone is just kind of better as a dark support unit. Um, so yeah. And like Kalem and like champion Kalem and Cam champion Serena can just work together super well. And so like, I mean, those are master units, right? But like. They're just way way better um so i don't think that zinni is like super strong but i think she does is interesting enough um but obviously i'll i'll have to test her i will get her so i'll ha i'll test her a little bit so i don't think she's that good maybe she's like a b a tier maybe if she's good enough to i don't know if she's good enough to be a tier but yeah um We'll have to see. Maybe I'm underestimating the no stat increase effect. Maybe that is really good. Um, and she's definitely like, that would make push her A. Um, and also, I think Bruno and Lorelei, I think that they're both honestly pretty good too. Um, again, nothing crazy here. Nothing crazy going on about their kits. But they're both able to like raise crit rate. They're both able to, um. they're both able to uh, raise like, attack pretty well and uh one can apply enduring and is really good at self-healing cloister here is really good at self-healing and charging the move gauge but then onyx is also good at charging the move gauge because it can raise speed um and um has a cheap move and also screech is free um you know if you have that sync node which makes it so that it's free um but the problem with these units is that these units are like i don't think most people are going to roll for these units because these units aren't like that special because it's not like a different outfit of Lorelei or a different outfit of Bruno. Um, it's not like a sickness or anything. And they're kind of just basic. I mean, they're good, but like they're kind of basic. And also, I think most people aren't going to invest candies. Like, I think people are very willing to invest ca uh, move candies into like Steven or like Zinnia right people are i feel like people will invest candy in like units like those but when it comes to like bruno and Lorelei, you're not you're probably not gonna invest candies and so like yeah they're just kind of okay um i think they're both really good though um i i, keep, I like oh they're okay they're really good i think they're they're good they're good but you probably just, you probably have better options and um yeah i mean these are like these are like legendary or legendary gauntlet units you know it's not really that not really that good in terms of like the best there is for your team you're not going to get these you're not going to be using these units you're going to be using these units when you have to use them right so in conclusion yeah basically all of them are a <laughs> maybe zinnia is like b and then maybe steam is like s like a little bit above like maybe steam is really good and maybe zinnia is not that good oh and lyra is kind of b i think i think she's b so everybody is like pretty decent no nope, nothing too crazy strong but nothing too crazy weak um but yeah that's probably what i'll be doing i'll definitely go in all in for Zenia. she's gonna get maxed out similarly to annabelle maybe i'll roll for steven um but we'll see but anyways thank you for watching it has been a long video i'm sorry that was so long but um there's a bunch of other stuff that is happening in this patch too so get excited guys it's a pretty pretty cool patch pretty cool patch and um people are saying that next month is like a, a lola villain arc i don't know where you got this information from but yeah next month there might be a villain arc and so there might be really cool units coming up and so i might recommend waiting a little bit again the best unit here is probably steven but if you don't really care about Steven and you don't really like his kit, then I think this is a really easy skip month for you if you don't like the other units. Um, Cause yeah, I think all the, I think the, oh, they're all good, but they're not must pulls. For example, like Marnie, Champion Marnie, and like you know Champion 
Bay Day, those are you might be able to consider them as must pulls, but when it comes to this month, it's pretty uh, it's pretty chilled out. It's pretty chilled out. So yeah. Anyways, thank you for watching, and um, yeah.